And the song came on and they both pulled over and started crying and called each other. They hadn't spoken in four or five years. And they're sitting there telling me this and I'm thinking, man, if I would have had a song to bring my mom and I back together, I didn't have that song. Twenty-three years ago, that's yeah. nutty. I was like an abused puppy back then, and I was just, I would lash out. I always tell Will Willow, I'm like, you gotta be a dolphin, dude. You gotta let that water just glide right down your back. <laughs> it was over the cliff, and I looked down and I was like, oh man. And the camera guy was like, yeah, I hear you. I was like, well, we're falling together. Street lights, I'm screwing up the words. Singer, songwriter, gymnast, and mother of two young children, Alicia Beth Moore, commonly known as Pink, has been topping the charts for over 20 years. Having spoken to Pink during the height of COVID, when both her and her son Jameson were ill, I wanted to take the opportunity to get to know the person behind the music, style, and acrobatics. How do you feel like your style has evolved or changed? Oh, it hasn't. I look exactly like I looked at 14. <laughs> I have not changed at all, except I took my tongue ring out. Okay, what? I was 21 and I felt like it was time to be a mature adult and I felt like taking your tongue ring out was the thing to do. You were talking before about your daughter Willow and about her being so good. She's so good. Is she a better kid than you was? Yeah, I don't know. I'm told I was really sweet <laughs> and that I have this odd idea of myself that I never was. But she's, yeah, she's an absolutely delicious human, but you can't compare her childhood to mine either. Like we grew up in different ways. 23 years ago, you release um, There You Go back in 2000. Yes. All that time ago. 23 years ago, that's yeah. nutty. Into the third decade, I think. Nutty. Listen, smashing it, still on fire. <laughs> um, when you go back to that time, how do you feel like creating music, creating work has changed for you? Was you more cautious then and now you're just more free? As you say, you don't give a shit as much, or was you the same then as you are now? I was the same then as I am now, but back then I was just angry at the world. I was like an abused puppy back then, and I was just, I would lash out. And now I think I've exercised a lot of those demons through group this group therapy that I call a concert. And I, my, I guess my anger is more focused and I now know that anger is a healthy thing as opposed to something to be afraid of. Why is it healthy? Because it's a survival instinct. Like people think judgment is bad, but it's actually a survival instinct. We have to judge within seven seconds whether you're safe, do I like you? It's turned into, do I like your shoes also? <laughs> that was about but three seconds. <laughs> like, can you provide me food? All these things that we do are survival instincts just uncapped. Somebody that has a life like yours, success and stardom, being able to keep your feet on the ground and staying who you are. How do you feel differently spiritually and emotionally through those decades? Um, I mean, I've heard people talk about it and I think it's different for everybody. I'm still very immature. <laughs> you're as old as you feel, right? Yeah, you're as old as you feel, but also you have, you're integrating all the time this experience that you have. And um, I don't know, it's yummy, especially as a woman. I can only tell you as a woman, it just gets better and better and better. When you're in your 20s, you have a number for that scale. You have an idea for your life. You have anger that you haven't yet worked out or figured out why, where does this come from? Who am I? How do I use this? And then you just start answering, you start ticking off boxes and answering questions and you just start to give a shit less about certain things. And then other things you care more about. And it's just, it just depends on who you are and how fast you evolve and your experiences and all of that. Talking about giving a shit less, I mean, there's something I picked up from uh, one of your songs, um, Never Gonna Not Dance Again. <laughs> what I took from that, because as I said before, like you go through certain things as you get older and through your 20s and 30s. I was in a township in South Africa and I was watching these people who have nothing, yep. just dancing away for yep. hours and hours. It's that moment of never not dancing again. Yeah. Just creating those moments that you can't buy. How important are they, do you think? Um, it's, it's survival. I mean, it's, it's interesting. People are like, man, pink doesn't take any sh And I'm like, I said this actually quoted in the documentary. I eat it for breakfast. Like yeah. I, that's not true. You're so tough. Nothing bothers you. That's absolutely not true. I'm tough because everything bothers me. Mm. 
And so you, now we all are walking around with this low level trauma, I feel like, and it is so important to be able to put that down sometimes and just turn it up to 11, not to be cheesy, but, and just shed some of that. I always tell Will, Willow, I'm like, you gotta be a dolphin, dude. You gotta let that water just glide right down your back. <laughs> <laughs> and when she's super stressed out, I'm like, <laughs> she's like, oh my God, my mom's being a dolphin. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, also you'll find that the people that have the least um, appreciate the most and are dancing in the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to Haiti with UNICEF and dancing in the street, dancing in the street, and and just with nothing, no clean water. And so you just, as you go through the things in your life, it makes you appreciate more what you have. Something that made uh, hardly anybody angry was 2001, the release of Lady Marmalade. Oh, God. I don't know. I think it probably made some people angry. That wig made me angry, looking back at it now. <laughs> How long did it take to shoot the video? Three days, two days, three days. What was it like working with those other ladies? I mean, it was awesome. It was incredible. I did not want to be in that outfit. And... It was also kind of awful, but it was mostly amazing. So if you could go back, would you do it again? Oh yeah, it was so fun. It if, was so fun. Let's go to Trustful, the music video. Yes. Um, Georgia talk, Hudson, she's yeah. amazing. Amazing, I love the video, I love the tune. You, you're doing acrobats in this in this video. Kinda. You do, you do, you, to me it is. Yeah, so okay. Like, <laughs> on stage, your performances are electric, you know that. Do you ever get scared? You ever, oh yeah. Do you? Oh my God, I was terrified in the video. I didn't understand why we had to be actually over the cliff. I was like, can we just not, cameras, cameras are great these days, guys. So that was, but it was, over it was over the cliff. And I looked down and I was like, oh man. And the camera guy was like, yeah, I hear you. I was like, well, <laughs> we're falling together. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, but yeah. The whole reason I got into silks was because I was afraid of heights and I didn't want to be afraid anymore. So. It didn't work, <laughs> but it, it's fun. It's fun enough to do it. Have you ever, what, what's the nearest you've been to like injury or even serious injury? Oh, I've been hurt. I almost, I almost had my legs ripped off. Um, legs ripped off? Yeah, I was in this sort of ankle knot hold and the winches started going apart and you can't get out of that. And especially when your weight is down on it. Yeah. It's like one of those finger things. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was awful. And my rigor dash they called him Dash for a reason. <laughs> he he got under me and took the pressure off so I could get my feet out in time. But had he not, it would have been really bad. And I also crashed in Germany on my 360 device, which is the one where I fly, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Pinkerbell. <laughs> and that crashed and that hurt a lot. But the best thing that came from that was my, our tour t-shirt then became, I made that barricade my <laughs> And that was my favorite tour t-shirt. So you talk about these near on, <laughs> you talk about these near on serious injury moments. You said yeah. you've got bad knees before. Yeah, I'm a gymnast. Everybody's going to have bad knees at some point. That's true. I like to use this body. All right, we're going to skip back again. <laughs> we're going to go one year in front of Lady Marmalade. We're going to talk about family portrait. Okay. This song made such an impact for so many kids, including yeah. me. Yeah. tell you why in a bit. How important is it for you that your tunes resonate with people and they, you see them making a positive impact. It's kind of the whole thing. It's the whole thing. I'm very, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very into psychology. It's the whole thing. I mean, I remember opening for Lenny Kravitz back then and this mom and daughter stopped me and they hadn't spoken since their divorce and they were both driving in the same town listening to the same radio station and the song came on and they both pulled over and started crying and called each other. They hadn't spoken in four or five years. And they're sitting there telling me this and I'm thinking, man, if I would have had a song to bring my mom and I back together. I didn't have that song at the appropriate time, but what a gift. Like, thank you, thank you universe for helping me be just an open wound walking through the world. <laughs> and I think that song also helped my family. It was very uncomfortable at first. It was a rough four days when I first played that song to them, but. Did you get emotional singing it? I used to. I. I'm okay with it now though. Like I, I, I realize it's part of the story and it's an important part of the story. And I, I know my parents, I know their lives. It, there's a moment in your life where your parents become, they fall from that God place and they become humans. And that's a really painful time in life to realize your parents are human. 
and flawed. And then you go through the forgiving process and then you become their parents. And that, that part's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read something that you went to therapy with your dad and other people. Is that correct? When you were younger, when you were a child? No, I wish. Oh God, I wish. That's one thing I would have loved to have been able to do. My mom threw me on a therapist's couch when I was 14 to wow. try and fix it. And the therapist actually said, I think the wrong person is on the couch. And I was like, <laughs> oops. And then we ran over the bushes on the way out of there. So yeah, it wasn't a good day. But seeing stuff like that growing up and what your mom and dad are going through, do you think it's important to let kids see that, a, a, a little side of that? Because it teaches them to be strong at a young age. I do. I think that we've run out of time on the let's preserve their childhood and keep them naive when our kids are coming home and saying, I had an active shooter drill today at school. And your heart drops out of your stomach. And you're like, oh, you're eight. <laughs> that, how, did you, how did that make you feel, honey? Um, it's, I try to walk a very fine line of, I need to prepare you for the world. And I want you to have a childhood. I want you to have joy and not have bad dreams at night. And it's a very fine line right now in the world. And um, my friend went through that sim something similar where she thought everything was perfect in her family. And then all of a sudden one day they split up and the rug came out from under her. And I, I was the opposite. I never had a day in my house where there wasn't screaming. And so I was relieved oh, you got when it was over. Oh, I was begging them to get a divorce. Like, please stop, this is hell. And then he, your dad leaves and it's really sad. It sucks, it's all, it's all life is hard. But um, I, I, I try to walk that line. It's a really delicate line these days. By important. And also the pandemic and also all kids have anxiety right now. It's gnarly when you look, when you know, I know a lot of kids and teenagers and everybody across the board, anxiety. It's like the new yeah. thing. And it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. How old is Willow now? 11. Do you feel like, cause we've watched, you know, we've watched her grow with you. Would you, do you feel like she's becoming your mate, like your, your best pal? Um, mm, I'm, I'm a tough, I'm a tough mama. So, yes, she is um, a soul. She's my soul child, but I'm still her. I'm not in this game to have a bestie. I'm in this game to love her so hard, <laughs> but make I'm sure James. that she's not a d and that she's gonna be okay. And Jameson. Jameson's gonna be a DJ in Vegas. That guy's, he's. Do you want that? He's a charming little psychopath. <laughs> he's just so funny. They're so different. She's a delicious, thoughtful, internal processing, Harry Potter loving human. And he's like, hey, what's up? He's like, knock, knock. knock. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to be a Yes. I think they both are. I don't worry about her as much as Papa does. I actually worry about the other person. So. We've watched you and Kerry, you know. Amazing together, amazing children, go through everything. <laughs> Don't ask me for the answer for marriage. I look at your song, Turbulence, and I see it as, for me, every, I, everyone looks at songs mm -hmm. differently. This is how I see it, that everything gets bad in terms of relationship, in terms of driving, in terms of walking down the street. Everything has a good and a bad patch. Yep. But Turbulence, you just come out the other side. How important is, I think it's so important to know that because things can't be going back to perfect all the time. Yeah. My mom and I's relationship taught me that love is a lifetime of coming back to the table. And sometimes you swipe that table and sometimes it's a bad meal. But a lo love is a lifetime of coming back to the table. And so I feel like that in politics right now too, like we've stopped, we're not at the table anymore. No one's at the table, we can't be at the table. Mm. And we just have to come back to the table. And long-term relationships of any kind, I don't care who you are in it, mother, child, father, son, doesn't matter. Um, partners, it's friendships. It's just, it's, it's up and down. Turbulence for me is actually about anxiety. Yeah. And it's sort of me wanting to talk, um, talk a child through it. And yeah, it's, uh, life is messy and awesome. Who do you listen to when you're trying to motivate yourself? Maybe when you're going out on stage when you're about to record an album? I don't know why, but Don't Stop Believing" by Journey, the whole last tour was the song that would play before I went on stage. And I was like, this feels wrong. 
Um, Have you ever sung it on stage? No. Yeah, you're about to sue you. Don't stop. It's actually kind of a quirky song. You know, you know, you just said don't stop. Well, don't stop. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear one line. Come on. That's the only line I know, actually. Uh, don't stop believing. Da, 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 da. Street lights. I'm screwing up the words. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, we just need to hear that. That's good. The voice is it. Um, Pink, that's all I've got. It's honestly an absolute... Thanks. That was a deep dive. Thank you. I really, really enjoyed having you. Um, you're always incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're doing Next life. time you see me, I'm going to have those shoes on. <laughs> <laughs>